outgoing president, Halima Yaakob, has called it a privilege to be the voice of Singaporeans. Speaking on her last day in office, she says she is humbled by the trust and faith placed in her over the last six years and wishes President-elect Tharman Shimugaratnam the best in discharging his duties. At her farewell reception, Prime Minister Lee Sin Lung also paid her a heartfelt tribute. He spoke of how Madam Halima brought the nation together and was a conscientious custodian of the country's reserves. Tan Se Hui reports from the Astana. A powerful symbol of unity for all Singaporeans. That's how Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong described outgoing President Halima Yaakob. He says she showed the way with grounded leadership. He also called her an inspiration to all as a woman from a minority community with humble beginnings. You showed that our meritocratic system works, that every Singaporean can achieve his or her aspirations, regardless of race, language or religion, and regardless of family background or station in life. This happens only in very few countries in the world and is something that Singaporeans can justly be proud of. Your own lived experience is surely a major reason you so strongly believe in building a more egalitarian and inclusive society. Mr. Lee points out that the government was able to stabilize the economy and preserve jobs during the pandemic thanks to the support of Madam Halima. She had given her assent to draw down on the past reserves during her term, which was crucial in protecting lives and livelihoods. Mr. Lee referred to the nation's two key system of protecting past reserves with the president and the government each holding one key. Advised by the Council of Presidential Advisers, you work closely with the government to understand the rapidly developing situation, to assess the government's proposed responses and requests, and to ensure that the requested draws on reserves were necessary and justified. This system of two keys made all the difference during the crisis. The robust processes we had put in place and the steady hands operating the system allowed us to protect this unique resource while retaining flexibility to draw what we truly needed in an extraordinary crisis. I'm confident this system will continue to serve us well in the years to come. Similarly, Madam Halima says she's had a good working relationship with the government that's based on mutual respect of each other's roles. And as a champion for social causes and disadvantaged groups, she hopes that there continues to be equal access to opportunities for all. Singapore also has a role to play to promote this at the global stage, to make the world a better place for all. Because in a highly globalized and digitalized world, the effect of xenophobia and prejudice are not confined to national borders. Turning to the pandemic, Madam Halima says the greatest lesson was how the past reserves allowed the nation to act decisively and save Singapore from a disaster. As a small open economy, we continue to face many economic challenges. But if we stand together and stay united, we have a better chance of keeping Singapore exceptional. I have seen how we stood united during the COVID-19 pandemic, where people observed the safe distancing rules and supported each other, enabling us to navigate safely out of the pandemic. The government could not have done it alone. Rounding off her speech, Madam Halima thanked Singaporeans, adding that it has been a privilege to be their voice. Earlier, President Halima said her goodbyes to members of the staff at the Istana. It was a bittersweet moment as they shook hands and shared laughs. After taking this group photo, Madam Halima waved goodbye before leaving in a state car. President-elect Taman Shmugaratnam will be sworn in at the Istana on Thursday. Organizations in Singapore tell CNA how President Halima Yaakob advanced many social causes during a term characterized by a down-to-earth approach. The labor movement says Madam Halima always had the welfare of workers at heart, regularly engaging the unions even after becoming president, continuing a passion that began 45 years ago with her first job at the National Trades Union Congress.
our women leaders, you know, they come in contact with her as well, and our healthcare workers, you know, and they, she understood the needs of the various different types of workers, you know, from the different rank and file to the PMEs, you know, to the platform workers. Yes, she, it's something that's very, very close to her heart. As the country's first female president, the Singapore Council of Women's Organisations lauds her as a trailblazer, saying she has stood up for diversity on many fronts, including for people with disabilities. She is also sitting on the Council uh, of Port Diversity as a patron and uh, what I really think is amazing about her is she really walks the talk and leads by example. So for herself, she also makes sure that, you know, to make conscious effort to have diversity in her own uh, uh, Council for Presidential Advisors. Reaching out to people who are vulnerable, uh, who are, have disabilities and trying to work at ways to help us understand that we really belong. Addressing employers, encouraging them to get the employment practices uh, more accommodating for persons with disabilities. Then also at national level, where she has made speeches and on her social media posts, speaking up for persons who may not have a voice. Another social service agency says the outgoing president has left a lasting impression with her humility and warmth. Her consistent participation in Jamie's events, such as food ration and meat distributions, demonstrated her hands-on approach to addressing the practical needs of the community.